actually a PR'd Brawl Snake main back in Georgia. So this man has history with the character, bringing it back, and he has been fearsome with it. We've got the secondary Roy, which could pop up if this turns out a little bit raw, but I think that this matchup's fairly decent. What about you, j -Dog? What do you think? Um, I feel like this matchup is okay, because, you know, this is one of those matchups where you don't have the uh, Brawl knowledge to rely on, because Cloud was in Brawl. True. It's a very new and different landscape, but I feel like it's one that Cloud can navigate very well. He's still very strong. And considering that you still have one of the best moves, if not the best straight move in the game, Nikita, for edge guarding, and Cloud's recovery is severely limited with that 15 second timer on limit, I would not be surprised to see if we get some early kills this game. Mm -hmm. Plus, even if he does burn limit, like Nias and burn it to up B if the ledge trapping is there. Unfortunately, uh, Pathfinder does over me a little bit, and now he's going to eat a lot of damage for it with the increased airspeed and ground speed from Cloud with Limit. And is he okay up there? He's been up there for a very long time. <laughs> he's up there getting, uh, getting a drink, <laughs> heading over to the water fountain. Like, listen, I'll be right back in a minute or two. I don't want to put up with you swinging that sword down there. Yeah. And he gets back safely and manages to go ahead and get a couple trades here, but he hasn't really landed a solid hit yet. I haven't seen him take advantage of neutral. It's just been these, like, traditional snake. I throw down a grenade, you hit my shield, we both blow up. Normally, Snake's okay with that, but he's at 150. Zephyr's only at 60. That's a problem. Great parry and a forward tilt in the middle of that side B, though. He doesn't get too much out of it. Just relieve some pressure. Down throw? No, forward throw. Get the positioning for the Nikita and reset it again. Did Nikita? he touch stage? Nope. Okay, he did not, and he did the fantastic option of turning the Nikita around to hit the back of Cloud's recovery. That's a way that, I mean, that sword will trade with Nikita if you're front facing, but if you get him in the back of the head, ain't nothing you can do to stop him. Mm -hmm. I mean, he can, like, reverse up but that's a hell of a read. I don't see a lot of clouds doing, but back here, I see a lot of clouds doing that because that move is nice. Yeah, I mean, what nerfs? Yeah. <laughs> he still got it. The only move that he really got nerfed was neutral air. He decided, you know what, uh, I don't need to extend my arm fully. He blew out his shoulder between Smash 4 and Smash Ultimate. It Swing was his that first big old sword game. around? Yeah, it's he, legit. It was his first Smash game, so he was trying a lot harder. He was like, overextending. That's not good for you. <laughs> this man needs his Tommy John surgery, so he can go ahead and extend that elbow. Yeah. But luckily, they had surgery. He was able to save the career, but his nair is not the same. But he still has a bright career out of it. <laughs> Putting away the four-seam pass while picking up a cutter? Yeah. All right, I take it. <laughs> Zephyr's, Zephyr's playing this really, really patiently. I'm, I'm digging the way that he's approaching this. He's not really afraid to like back up, charge limit, and throw a couple blade beams. Mm -hmm. He's and not going to get too much out of it, but he's going to get enough. And even passively, he gets some time to get limit, which is never a bad thing, because you're going to need it to recover consistently against Nikita, as you said earlier. Yes, sir. But right now, no limit, 142, and that down air just saved. You know the pattern was aiming to go ahead and snipe out that recovery. Zephyr, Shades of Smash 4, he was moving and grooving on the, his opponent's shield, getting a grab and not pulling the trigger on that um, punish because the grenade probably would have saved him and potentially killed Zephyr if the DI wasn't there. Pattern's getting a little thirsty. We saw that up till come out couple times there. It's it's a good move, and yeah, if he's hopping around your shield, you might get it, but there's, there's such a thing as uh, over-reliance. But right there, sniping out that recovery, even if you've got limit, if you're going to go high, I mean, Snake's got the tools to cover that. Yeah, always. Dash Tack, he has his hands intangible. And he set that C4 down so early, I think Zephyr forgot about it, and if he didn't snap the ledge, that would have curtains for the Buster Soldier himself, but he's still staying alive, and he's still trying to get his limit online. Oh, he's just not making them as much out of these ledge trap efforts. That's kind of like what's always been in Cloud's B&B, is getting guys to ledge and just never letting them back. And it's twice on the path and just managed to sneak by. I'm loving that limit side beam, though, or limit uh, blade beam. Yeah, it was a good idea, but Pathran reacting very quickly, just throwing out a grenade and forcing that hitbox to proc, getting all those um, hitboxes out of the way and being able to recover. Still, Zephyr managed to get the sock. He has over 100%, which is bad, but unless he gets up tilted, he should be mostly okay, I think. Yeah, Snake has to throw it out. He has to commit if he wants to try to kill at this percent. Otherwise, he can just wait the 30% out where he can get that guaranteed down throw up tilt. But it looks like Pathran ain't trying to wait. He tried to toss it out. Oh no, this is going to be a lot of damage. Going for the forward air and nice Catching the slash. landing again. Zephyr again. gets so much. Look at how he's using these uh, cross slashes to cover that airspace in front of him. Now this is a competitive game. He's maybe one uh, smash attack or dash attack away from killing, and he's playing around with grenades a bit better. He eats a hit with the dash attack, and this is where it's scary. Drifts back to avoid the up tilt, but still gets a down tilt. Staying alive, though. Catherine unable to intercept that high up B recovery. He's at 156, so a, a grab will do it at this percent. But a limit, any limit attack will kill right now. 
Okay, great B reverse to go ahead and get some space back. Zephyr committed a little bit too high. Didn't expect to see that momentum get canceled again. Dash attack for Zephyr to edge, and we're almost done with that 15 second timer on limit. Are you just gonna throw yeah, it out? Just toss it out. Yeah, I. I Catherine agree with that. wise to back off there. That should do it. Yes. Finally, a nail biter. Zephyr starting to Ooh. bring it back. His advantage state was working so good for him, but at the end of the day, you have to know the basis of CQC to move on this bracket. And Snake is a master at it. Yeah, he ain't gonna let you get in for free. Toss out the grenades, make you come to me, and then remember, I can still throw hands, son. Mm -hmm. I choked out a man or two in my day. Snake is not one to take uh, take lightly, even once you get in. He kind of feels like, a, he really feels like a raid boss. You're marching through these explosions, and then you finally get in, and this man throws out the left hook and stuns you. Yeah, he's definitely one of those characters who will eat your quarters <laughs> back in the day. I spent like $50 trying to defeat Snake, but no, you, you can't. He'll just keep on blowing you up and keep on keeping you out. And he'll make it close enough where you feel the false hope, mm -hmm. where you'll just want to put more quarters in. And then he just up tilts. Yeah, then, then he just up tilts. <laughs> That's all yeah. she wrote. Back to start. Game over, son. PG, go next. So going to Final D, I'm digging this right now. It's basically giving Patheran less space to work around with. We saw what Zephyr did so well there was covering landings and getting that side B and that up B every now and then to basically punish when Patheran tried to land for free. So if you could do that on a stage with no platforms, with no opportunity to go ahead and vary your movement as much, then yeah, make the most of what you got. Make your advantage count. More free real estate, but speaking of free real estate, that back air after the grenade was absolutely guaranteed. There wasn't much Zephyr can do about that. And Back the timer is getting a little bit low. He has to just up beat, get the most out of it, and go straight back down to the ledge. Smart Very smart. Player. Very smart. Recovery. Up tilt. There we go. Yeah, every now and then, you can just go ahead and do it. If they're jumping a little bit too much, it doesn't really hit behind them as much as it used to in Brawl, but it's still got the range in front. So. Yeah. I mean, invincible option like roll spots out and up tilt has been a true thing for forever. So. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Great parry, but oh, he wasn't sure what side it would be on. Snake stretched himself out so far, but he knew what side he was on that time for the back air. Throwing that out there, getting the kill, 21% on the side of Zephyr, functionally even. Mm -hmm. Trying to get, catch Patharan, just trying to sneak back to ledge. Now spe speaking of sneak back to ledge, we got to see if Zephyr can sneak off of ledge there. Great aggressive forward air, just hitting the landing hitbox to go ahead and get back some stage control. He needs it right now. He did desperately. Oh, and that's a lot of damage. Forward tilt to force Zeph off stage again, and out comes Nikita. Great air dodge, though. But <laughs> Pathran already had that angle all the way back. I respect it. Sometimes you just have to go out there and do it, you know? Commit to your options. It's like when your opponent charges a forward smash and they just keep on charging it, you know? It's a good commitment. It's not a good commitment, but you already made a bad commitment. Yeah, exactly. So you might as well wait until it's almost a good commitment. Yeah, it's like, this is the life I've chosen to lead. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. I know what the game is. It's not a read. It was a reaction. You were holding it for five minutes. It was a reaction. That was a read, though, from Zephyr. Getting the limit cross slash, 157%. There was no way that he was going to DI and make it through that one alone. Very true. I think Patheran may have mistakenly, like, be reversed the side B there. Like, he, he was definitely aiming the uh, Nikita in the wrong direction there. And that's the easiest move to punish when they mess it up, because you can just hear the little ding ding in the, in the ear. And if you see the Nikita go in the opposite direction, it's like, well, I don't have to worry about dying this time, so I'm going to light you up for that. Yep. Speaking of lighting you up, Zephyr is doing a good job of it right now. Zephyr, please up this man. I want to see it. He's still so far well, off. He's going for the blade beam, though. That was so much smarter than it needed to be. Like, remember I said, like, sometimes you have to oh. do dumb decisions? That was a smart decision by Patheran, but the smart or the dumb decision from Zephyr would have been to up B, and it would have been the smart decision, you know? You yeah, know so I mean? sometimes the bad read's a good read. Exactly. Even a broken clock is right twice a day is how I like Yes, to sir. <laughs> I and mean, that's the only reason why I'm on commentary. I'm right every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> you just throw out a minute as you can, and then every now and then it turns out to be right. Yep. <laughs> And then say, I just knew. I just knew. But now Zephyr might be looking at the set and wondering what happened. He didn't know that it was going to be this close. He almost has limit. Gets it off that back air. But now what's the mix-up? Can he go for an edge guard? Doesn't come in. He just keeps the limit online and gives Pathran a free avenue back to center stage, only to take away from with that back air. Yeah, that was impressive right there. That movement from Zephyr was fantastic. A lot of players like to dash dance quite a bit, but they don't get anything out of it. One of the things that I think the mid to high level players start doing when they get really good at this game is they dash dance purposefully. What Zephyr was doing there, he was trying to whiff, or trying to force Pathran to whiff anything. Pathran pulled out a grenade and he looked like he dropped shield so that he could drop the grenade and toss it at him. As soon as he saw that, back there. Yep. That, that's how you dash dance. That's what you use it for. Don't just give up space for free. Don't give that man free real estate. Make sure you're getting something out of the exchange. 
And also, you can't just stand there because otherwise you're just being too predictable. Dash dancing into a whip punish is the optimal play, especially in that scenario, and Zephyr was ready for all of that. So on to game three now. And all these games have been relatively close. We haven't seen a player like just take a lead and run with it. And that's I think it's kind of like a function of these two characters. Snake is always a, like a trade R us. But he is not one to go ahead and you know open up a combo and then let it go. Okay, speaking of let it go, that, that spike almost led to quite a bit right there, but Catherine was able to DI a little bit too far away for Zeph to follow up. Yeah, but look at how much damage has already been done. Snake, you know, we've already, everyone's already said it has some of the worst disadvantage scenarios in this game. So um, when you get one hit, if you keep the hits coming, you can get a lot of free mileage, especially when he's willing to blow himself up and add on more damage for you. I really think the path range is trying to stay as high as possible, as long as possible, to wait out these limit timers. That's that's like next level thinking right there. I'm digging it. it is, he's definitely it's... expending all of his resources, though, so when he comes down, it's a little bit more predictable. Yeah, not only that, but like, he's still getting hit afterwards, too. True, like, but sure, he... the limit's not, not there, but is that the tax you want to play? Yeah, I, it's, it's definitely like a, it, it's an option. It's not the option. It may not be the solution every single time, and if Zep gets wise to it, then uh, that's going to be a problem for Path Ram. But every now and then, digging it. Oh, and hit him with the size 15 in the face, but luckily he has a limit there just in time, and Path Ram wasn't ready for the ledge, but he was ready for the roll off the ledge. Yeah, great reaction by him. Optimal punish with that up tilt. Just say, listen, I'm going to turn around, and uh, you can't get away from me. That roll is not long enough. Oh, great match by Zeph. Yeah, I can't let you have the two pummels for free. Catherine was definitely trying to go ahead and set up that grenade explosion. Just not quite long enough. Yeah. That shield's looking awfully small. There's the poke right there. And cross slash isn't a true block string, so he had to let that go. Or his shield be broken, guaranteed death. Or, you know, cross slash, you're not going to die. I think he hedged his bets properly. Yeah, he's at 200. Like that. I don't know if cross slash kills at 200, but I don't want to find out. And it seemed like Patheran didn't want to either. Yeah. Now, I feel like this is kind of scary for Zephyr because, yeah, Patron's getting the better end of a lot of these ledge exchanges. Now let's see if he can make it back off the ledge. He has to fight back and burn his limit, but he's alive, and that's what counts. Yeah, great aggressive upbeat. That's all he needed. 79%. It definitely took a little bit more percent than he would have liked in that edge exchange. But, uh, okay, uh, so it turns out Cloud has a kill throw after 200. Well, see, Today I learned. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I still agree with the design decision to, like, kind of give everyone a... Uh, this character should have been dead 50% ago, but you couldn't get anything else, so here you go. Kill throw. True. Just one of those, listen, I just want the stock to be over. I don't want to deal with this anymore. Yeah, it's good for game flow. Oh, oh you had great. to... great. You're dead. Yeah, that's that's all she wrote. That was just great knowledge by Zephyr. It's like, listen, all I need to do is put this on your shield, and that's all. You cannot take that, Pathrin. Well, it's great knowledge from Zephyr, but, like, not the best awareness from Pathrin, because the last hit is parryable. True. Like, even if you drop your shield, sure, you might have taken the hit and possibly died, but if your shield's break, broken, you are always going to die if you're above 70% against Cloud. Yeah, that's uh, that's a very good point, actually. All right, the up tilt going to clean that up, and we are on game three, last stock, uh, just about even percents. Four and a half is all, of, all we've got so far. Zeph using these aggressive aerial specials. He basically is landing with side beam now. But then the forward air to force attack. He can't get anything out of it. Patherin does not miss those that often. Is he stuck? No, he's not. He tried, I saw, but it's back on the ground underneath the platform. All right, that was that would have been the cheeky th play right there for sure. Yeah, he was definitely looking for it. And that, uh, he wouldn't have died to it, but it no. just would have been like, you know, more pressure and more odds in his favor. Just something else Zephyr would have to think about. Yeah. Like, just so you know. Your life has an expiration date. Yeah. Your life ends 30 <laughs> seconds from now. Just holds the trigger on this. <laughs> okay, good air dodge, but he says limit. His movement, and then the back air. He's been so consistent with that. He uses movement options so fantastically, and Patheran just hasn't been picking up on these dashbacks. And it sucks because he threw that blade beam the moment that the limit expired. If that had not, um, or if it had not gone that way, if he said limit when he pressed the B button, that might have been it for Patheran. You're right, that actually would have clashed with the Cypher. That would have been terrifying. Yeah, but now we still have an even game. And look at that. Maybe Pathfinder's committing a bit too hard with these up tilts. I don't think it will kill just yet. No, but another 20%. Yeah. And now we have another limit online. Limit, limit is always on the table at these higher percents. That's and all he she gets wrote. It. Does, is that it? Oh, no. no! Look at that DI in the last pixel of the blast zone. Pathfinder managed to stay alive, but for how much long? Gets a grab. Up throw shouldn't do it yet. 
Again, staying alive. What presence of mind by Patharan to go ahead and have that DI ready. He absolutely needed every bit of that. And now a second lease on life, 200% here. He has, but he's got the ground. That's all he needs. Two minutes he just needs one or clock. two hits. That's all he needs. Oh, and he gets the ground. throw, is he going to get the tech chase? No, he goes for the offstage interaction. Nikita out, <gasps> down tilt to force him eye. If he had up tilted, that would have been it. I hear some people in the crowd wondering what was happening. If he had up tilted, that would have likely been it. But now Cloud almost has limit again. What can you do? Up he tilt. gets the read off a jump. He felt the pressure. He knew that Zephyr had to do something there. He was looking for the limit charge. Didn't get it quite in time. 